Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Tutorial for Control Rectifiers This tutorial is presented by Dr. Firuzare. In this example we have a single phase full wave control rectifier and we are going to find the firing angles to obtain 100 volts and 50 volts at the output of the converter so in this case we have control rectifier which is basically based on thyristor and this is AC DC converter so basically in a single phase when we have sine wave we can rectify the voltage and we get different voltage based on the firing angle that means by changing the firing angle we are able to control the output voltage so when we have resistive load that means in this case the output voltage cannot be negative so for this case the output voltage equals to Vm over pi times of 1 plus cosinus alpha that means if the input voltage is Vm sinus 2 pi t over t then the output voltage depends on the firing angle and the magnitude of the input voltage so for first voltage level which is 100 volt is equal to root of 2 times of 240 because the RMS value is given here over pi 1 plus cosinus alpha so here we can simplify and then pi is approximately 3.14 so 314 over root of 2 times of 240 equals to 1 plus cosinus alpha or cosinus alpha equals to 314 over root of 2 times of 240 minus 1 so basically here we can find the firing angle for a case that we need to get 100 volts so we can find the same equation to find the firing angle for 50 volts in this case cosinus alpha equals to 50 times of 3.14 over root of 2 times of 240 minus 1 and that means this is the firing angle to get 50 volts so the firing angle for this case is approximately 94 degrees and to get 50 volts firing angle is approximately 122 degrees the difference is that when we have an inductive load when we turn on a thyristor because load current is continuous so we can have negative voltage and then 
turn on the other set of thyristors and still we can get negative voltage so the reason is that at this zero crossing the current through the thyristor is positive so if this is current and if this is voltage output voltage so that's why at this zero crossing point thyristor is not turned off but the point is that when we have resistive load when we have negative voltage across the resistor the current through the thyristor or resistor can be negative so that's why in the previous case we had zero voltage because the thyristors um, were turned off so in this case we have different equation that means the output voltage equals to maximum value over pi because this is full wave rectifier so we have 2vm times of cosine alpha so first voltage level is 100 volts equals to 2 times of root of 2 times of 240 over 3.14 times of cosine alpha again cosine alpha equals to 314 divided by root of 2 times of 480 so from here we can find alpha and same for another voltage level that means cosine alpha is 50 times of 3.14 over root of 2 times of 480 so now we can find the firing angle for this case alpha is approximately 62 degrees so for this voltage level alpha is approximately 76 degree so when we compare this inductive load with the resistive load so alpha is basically 94 for resistive load and 122 for another voltage level which is 50 so we can write it for 50 100 100 volts and 50 volts so here is clear that for inductive load foreign angle is less than this foreign angle for resistive load because basically when we decrease the foreign angle that means we have this area which can cancel this area compared to resistive load because in resistive load to get same voltage level we need basically to calculate this area but in an inductive load because we have this negative value so this negative value should be cancelled by this positive value in order to get same voltage level so that's why in an inductive load the firing angle is almost less than resistive load either for this voltage level or for this voltage level so in this question we're going to compare a linear and a nonlinear foreign angle control circuit for a control rectifier so basically when we're talking about control rectifier that means we have to turn on thyristor at a different foreign angles suppose this is line voltage so this zero crossing point is quite important because basically we like to turn on and turn off the thyristor with respect to this point so that's why in the control circuit we cannot use for example different um, signals with different magnitude frequency and phase shift because if we have for example sawtooth 
with different frequency and different phase shift so when we compare with the DC voltage so this foreign angle is defined with respect to this point but there is a phase shift between this point and zero crossing so in this case we need to synchronize a sawtooth with respect to this zero crossing that means in a linear circuit when we have a sawtooth we basically generate sawtooth with respect to these zero crossing points so that's why in a linear circuit when we compare a DC voltage or control signal with this sawtooth and then we generate this pulse which basically synchronize with respect to this point or this zero crossing so that's why based on this pulse we define this foreign angle which is basically this foreign angle so what's the difference? the difference is that when we define the gauge signal based on this control circuit so if this is V sawtooth so we can find the foreign angle for example we can say that this side which is alpha over this side which can be defined as pi equals to this side which is V control over this side which is V sawtooth so from here we can find that alpha is pi over V sawtooth times of V control for example in a single phase control rectifier with pure inductive load the output voltage for full wave is 2Vm over pi times of cosine alpha and if we put alpha here so in this case we can see that this output voltage is a function of V control so this is not the linear equation that means by changing the control signal the output voltage is changed but not linearly so we can design another control circuit in such a case to have a proportional relation between the output voltage and V control so in this case we need to change the control circuit so at this point so we can compare this type of signal cosine type with the control signal for example if we look at this function we can define this function as V1 times of cosine 2 pi t over t plus 1 divided by 2 that means this point is this peak value is v1 so this is first zero crossing that means that means if this is line voltage input voltage the zero cross is synchronized with the control signal so we can find this function at, at different points different times for example at this point t is zero and at this point t is t over two so let's find for example f zero 
which is basically v1 cosine 0 plus 1 divided by 2 which is basically v1 times of 2 divided by 2 v1 which is correct this value at this point f t over 2 is v1 cosine 2 pi t over 2t plus 1 over 2 which is basically v1 divided by 2 times of cosine pi plus 1 so cosine pi is minus 1 so this term equals to 0 and that's correct because the function at this time equals to 0 or at this point for example in which t is t over 4 f t over 4 equals to v1 cosinus 2 pi over t times of t over 4 plus 1 divided by 2 which is basically v1 cosine pi over 2 plus 1 divided by 2 and this one equals 2 because this is 0 which is v1 over 2 and that's correct because this is basically v1 over 2 so now the point is that we can compare this signal with the control signal and then we can find the output voltage so now we can find the output voltage so basically if this is average over one cycle for a single phase we found 2vm divided by pi times of cosine alpha so this is for pure inductive load when the load current is continuous so V control equals to V1 times of cosine 2 pi T over T plus 1 divided by 2 basically this one is defined as cosine alpha then we can find cosine alpha from this equation which is 2 V control divided by V1 minus 1 so if we put cosine alpha in this equation the average output voltage over one cycle is 2 Vm divided by pi times of 2 V control over V1 minus 1 so in this case this equation shows that by changing the V control V out is changed linearly while in the previous equation V out output voltage average over one cycle was a function of cosine V control so this equation shows that V out is changed linearly with respect to V control